When it really comes down to it, Ash Wednesday is all about repentance. We take a look at our sins, all the ways that we have not loved God and our neighbor as we should. All the times that we have put ourselves ahead of others. All the times that we follow something else better than we follow God. We ask God's forgiveness and turn back to him. And the cross on our foreheads is a sign of that repentance. The cross is both a sign of our mourning, our sin, and of our desire to repent, our desire to follow God with everything we are. And that's not necessarily an easy thing to do. In today's gospel, Jesus had three people approach him. And all of three of them had a reason not to follow Jesus, at least not right away. The first one claimed that he would follow Jesus wherever he went. And Jesus' reply to him was, foxes and birds have homes, but I don't. Implying that Jesus' followers won't necessarily sleep in a bed every night. Another said he wanted to follow Jesus, but after his dad died. Jesus told him to, as he said in a number of places, leave your family behind and proclaim the kingdom of God. The third wanted to go and say goodbye to his family. But Jesus called his commitment into question and told him to follow right now. You see, we often make these kinds of deals with God, right? I'll follow you eventually. I'll follow you once I do this other thing. I told God that I was going to become a pastor in seven years or so. It didn't work. But that's what I told God. You see, Jesus, especially in the time when he was with us on earth, he knew what was going to happen to his disciples after his ascension. He knew what was going to happen to his disciples when he was killed on the cross. And so he was looking for people with 100% commitment. He was looking for people who would quite literally be willing to pick up the thing that they were going to die themselves on. That's a lot. When Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me, it wasn't something that he meant metaphorically. Jesus wanted people who would go to a death on a cross for his sake. And he even goes so far as to say, if anyone is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory. Jesus knew that his disciples would need that kind of commitment to put up with the things they were going to put up with after Jesus' ascension. His followers had to withstand arrests, persecutions, and many of them even death. Things that we just don't experience here. And in many ways, we often find our faith more like those three people that Jesus met on the road, saying, oh Lord, I'll follow you, but I kind of like my house. Or, oh, Lord, I'll follow you when I don't have to worry about my family anymore. I'll follow you, insert whatever the condition is for you. But that's not how it's supposed to work. That's not how it needs to work. If we're really going to follow Jesus, we need to follow him first. To the point that if we need to pick up our own cross and carry it to the place where we will be executed, that's what Jesus is asking from us. For us to repent and go back to that level of commitment is what Lent is about. It seems harsh, it seems extreme, but it's hard to argue with Jesus. 
So this season of Lent is for taking a hard look at our lives and searching for those places where we're not following him enough. Confessing that to him and turning back around. It's asking for the help of the Holy Spirit to strengthen us, to keep us on that path. As we pray so often in the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation. It's our time to pray and reflect on how our following Jesus is going. To find out those ways that we have fallen short. Because when we get to Good Friday, all of those ways that we have fallen short is what Jesus takes on himself. But luckily the story doesn't end at Good Friday. The story doesn't end with Jesus on the cross. Because if the story ended there, what's the point? Because all of those ways that we have fallen short, all of those ways that we have not followed God, Jesus crushed when he rose from the dead. Because while this is a season of repenting our sin, repenting the ways that we have not followed him, We know that he rose again so that all of that sin no longer has any power over us. Because in the midst of hearing, remember that you are dust and to dust you will return, we will also hear, this is my body. This is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of that sin. We repent and seek Jesus Because he died and rose for us. We spend these 40 days remembering our sin so that like the sinful woman in the gospel a few weeks ago, we can truly know what it is that we are being forgiven from. And so that when Easter rolls around, the celebration is that much more glorious. Glorious.